just give Sanya a minute to get that uh, going. Not that I'll be using voice much in the next few minutes. Maybe you could try and give her a hand, Roger. There won't be any voice or much voice in the next few minutes, but uh, it'd be a shame if she missed some of the stuff later on. Huh? Don't forget that the um, the hands with a weak five card club suit and a four card major will normally not be minimum because the suggestion is that you initially pass hands like that where your five card suit club suit is not good enough for an opening two clubs. Um, if you're lower range, it's too difficult to show five clubs and a four card major if you open it one diamond. You just don't have the strength to be able to make enough bids to show that kind of hand. So better to pass it initially and then come in later on if you're minimum. If you're mid or upper range, then it's fine. Open it one diamond if you can't open it two clubs.
so that's that's the critical thing here is that after one diamond one spade two clubs any hand that's maximum will pretty much make the two diamond relay because that allows responder to find out much more about opener's shape almost all of the other continuations apart from two diamonds show a lower range 11 to 13 count it doesn't stop us from going further if if opener is upper range but uh, responder can can effectively signal with their choice of rebid whether they are lower range or upper range themselves within that 11 to 13 bracket Are you sorted yet, Sanya? I've been trying not to say anything. Dead silence. Well, it's very weird. If you follow that link that I posted, it should take you straight to http colon slash slash ocp dot radio one two three four five dot com. I don't see why it's taking her to a completely different address. Weird. That's true. Well, Charlene, um, when I say minimum, I really do. I wouldn't. I wouldn't open an eleven or a twelve count hand with poor five card clubs and a four card major you can't open it if the clubs are really grossy you can't open it two clubs and I wouldn't open it one diamond if I had 11 or 12 13 upwards I would the problem is is that if you if it goes something like one diamond I don't know one no trump two clubs partners almost always going to assume that you've got weak six card clubs or most often five card clubs and a four card major because that's what you're going to have if it, if it goes one down one heart two clubs that's what you'll have most of the time the same with one down one spade two clubs if you're if you got a really grotty 11 or a 12 count and partner's got 11 you haven't got much space to actually sort out what your shape is partner may just um, bid three diamonds as I've just suggested they should do there with a minimum hand with four card diamonds because that's what you will have most of the time is four card diamonds and five card clubs the weak six card club suits hardly ever occur and uh, in practice the weak five card club suits with a four card major hardly ever occur most of the time if you've got a five card suit it'll be good enough for a two club opening um, so 11 or 12 I would tend to pass it and hope to come in afterwards uh, with 13 or upwards I would do so minimum does mean minimum 
lower range is definitely, you know, 11 to a poor 13. And upper range is a good 13 to 15. And 13 is about the middle. If you're talking about the 11 to 15 range, if you're talking about the 11 to 13 range, then lower range is 11 to a poor 12, upper range is a good 12 to 13. Okay? okay. You're welcome. Well, I, I do try to use those accurately. <sighs> Who's CC? Maisie? Well, okay, I, I didn't write half of the FTCC. I keep on trying to, f I keep on finding or having people tell me about stuff that's in there. If you, the FTCC is not the arbiter of what the system says. It's chock full of errors. It always has been. It always will be because I don't have the time to go through it all. If you want to find out what the system is, look at the website notes because that's gospel. Okay. If, if the website notes say something, it's right in terms of what the system is. The only time we open a 10 count is if you've got a 10 to 12 one no trump at, uh, when not vulnerable. That's the only time 10 counts come into the intermediate openings. Period. Okay. Right, let's carry on. Yeah, 10 to 12, one no trump, non-vulnerable is 10 to 12. But all of the other intermediate openings are 11 to 15, bar none. If you want to shade a 10 count up to an 11 count, that's fine. And, and that's your privilege. You know, I've opened, you know, one heart and one spade loads of times with a 10 count. But that's not what the system is. That's you upgrading your hand or re-evaluating your hand because you've got lots of playing strength. That's a whole different ball game. That's not that's your evaluation, not the system. Okay, so going back to what I said there, over the two diamond forcing relay, two hearts and two spades are not showing four card majors because partner will assume that you've got four card diamonds and five card clubs. Um, they can be four card majors, obviously, if you've got five clubs and four card, a four card major, but partner will tend to assume that you got the first of those two options i.e. a three card major and four card diamonds because 99% of the time that is what you'll have but they're all lower range those um, if you had an upper range hand you do something else and again over two diamonds two no trumps is two two four five with lower range
as I said before, because with lower range or minimum hands, we suggest that you don't open one diamond if you've got uh, weak five card clubs and a four card major. Most of the time you'll be upper range if you have that. And that's where the, the three heart and three spade bids comes in. So now these might be a three card major with four card diamonds, but they might also be uh, a four card major with weak clubs upper range. Yes, Barry, that's what I've said. Because most of the time you'll pass those hands initially, when you rebid two hearts and two spades, it's almost always going to be a three card major and four card diamond. Because if you're because they're showing lower range hands and it's it it's not often that you will open a lower range hand with a five card club suit, weak five card club suit and a four card major. But when you rebid three hearts or three spades over the two diamond forcing inquiry, now it is possible that you're because you're upper range, it is possible that you're weak five card clubs and a four card major rather than um one three four five or three one four five shape. Okay? Do you do you see what I'm getting at? Dead silence. <laughs> I don't want to move on before he's. I know he's got this idea. Is anybody else struggling with this idea that that? If you're four four in a major on clubs, you won't be rebidding two clubs. Okay, you re if you're upper range, you rebid three hearts or three spades. And as it says there, it's either three card hearts and four card diamonds upper range, or it's four card hearts and four card spades upper range. Roger, yes. All I'm saying, if you look further back, if you if you look, yeah, but these are hands where you've rebid two clubs, showing five card clubs. Roger, okay. If you're if you're lower range, and especially if you're minimum eleven or twelve, and you've got a weak five card club suit and a four card major but a hand that's not good enough clubs to open two clubs if you're lower range we suggest you're not forced to do it but we suggest that you don't open one diamond especially if you're playing the complex but in practice whatever you're playing um, because it's too hard for you to get your hand across but what Yes, because because you know you might you might no no you might decide to do it. You might be you know you might be just on the verge. 
and, and decide to chance it. Okay? You know, theoretically, it can be the, low, the two heart and two spade rebids can be, but in practice, they almost never are a four-card major. They are almost always a three-card major with four-card diamonds and five-card clubs for the specific reason that if you're lower range with four-card major and weak five-card clubs, you will normally pass. But not everybody follows what I suggest. <laughs> so theoretically, it can happen, but in practice it never does, especially if you follow what I suggest. But when it comes to the three heart and three spade rebids, it can be either, because you might be upper range with weak five card clubs and a four card major and have opened one diamond. I have to say, actually, it's, it's rare as rocking horse poop, this, because in practice, if you've got an upper range hand and, you know, not far short of half of your cards are in a club suit, the chances are that your club suit is going to be strong enough to open it two clubs. It's going to be very rare that you've got something like 10, 8, 6, 5, 4 in clubs and, and really not want to open it with two clubs, but you don't feel able to pass initially. It's more likely to happen with lower range hands, and we suggest that you pass. Okay. Anybody else still confused about this? It might be easier if I if I just completely rephrase how the lesson said, and just say, you know, it's almost never a four card major, and it is almost never. But theoretically, it can happen. So, essentially, we just bid naturally at this point. Whatever opener rebids, um, Responder has shown with the two diamond uh, forcing inquiry that they're upper range. And opener... Um, will carry on accordingly. Um, the, thing, the thing with the, the one diamond, one spade sequences is that if either of us is upper range, the chances are that we're going to go to game. The difference with the one diamond, one heart sequences is that we both need to be maximum before we're going to play in game. So one diamond, one spade, the whole emphasis is slightly different. One diamond, one no trump. It doesn't really matter if opener's minimum with a 14 count opposite, we're going to end up in game. So the one diamond, one no trump sequences that we come to next week are effectively game forcing. Okay. Any questions about... about one diamond, one spade, two clubs before we move on. So two of a major tends to be minimum with a five card suit. Um, and everything else is pretty much natural apart from uh, the two diamond bid. The three diamond bid is lower range but with four card diamonds because most of the time partner will have four card diamonds any upper range hand tends to go via the two diamond relay inquiry rather okay moving on Well, no, not really, uh, Barry. It's only a problem if you're if you're really 
absolutely dead set against playing in a Moisian fit. You know, um, if if partners bids three hearts or three spades, they've got a singleton. Almost certainly in the other major. If they've got a four card major, you don't know for sure. Um, but that isn't the problem. If they have got a singleton somewhere else, then a 4-3 fit is probably going to play quite nicely. So, you know, you don't really have a problem if you've got four cards in the suit. Uh, if they've bid three hearts or three spades, 99 times out of 100, it's going to be a three card suit. So you can, you can carry on uh, accordingly for the reasons that I've explained. Okay. You know, if you've got a problem playing in a Mojan fit, then maybe this system is not for you. <laughs> well, you won't be 2 2 4 5, that's for sure, if you bid 3 hearts or 3 spades. You might be 2 4 2 5, but at least now you know that they're upper range. And you've bid 2 diamonds, which shows your upper range. So the chances are you've probably got 27 or 28 points between the two hands. So playing in four hearts oughtn't to be a problem, or four spades, on a 4-3 fit. And of course, a lot of the time, you're going to have a five-card major anyway. It doesn't say you have to play in three hearts or three spades if, if opener re bids that. You can always just bid three no trumps if you've got really good holding in the other major. Um... You know, you responder can decide where to play. That's the whole point. Like I said, the, the times when you've got a four-card major and really weak five-card clubs in your upper range, I'll be honest, it's never happened to me. I can't remember a single occasion when I've had that holding. Um, it's in the system, just in case, but... Uh, and it may have happened to other people, but it's, I don't think it's ever happened to me. <laughs> okay. One diamond, one spade, two diamonds. Is an unbalanced hand with five card diamonds. When I say unbalanced, that does include two, two, four, five. So these, if you look at what it says there, these are hands that don't have a four card major. So if you've got four five in a major and diamonds, you're not rebidding two diamonds. It's a bit similar to the two club rebid this. Um, so normally for one diamond, one spade, two diamonds, you've normally either got six card diamonds or you've got at least four card clubs. If you've got a four card major, you bid two hearts or two spades, whatever your range, as we'll come to in a minute. So over two clubs. A two club rebid, the two diamonds is the forcing inquiry. Over two diamonds, it's two no trumps. So essentially, the two no trumps shows an upper range hand, and everything else is showing almost certainly a lower range hand. And again, over one diamond, one spade, two diamonds, two hearts and two spades are at least five card suits. We don't show them with, we don't bid them with four card suits. Once uh, responders shown up with five or possibly six or more diamonds.
hopefully you can see that, that most of these sequences are fairly, fairly intuitive. So over, over the two no trump forcing inquiry, if you've got a lower range minor two suitor, Um, sorry, if you if you've got a minor two suitor, five four six four, um, or even six card diamonds and a club stop, you rebid three clubs because the emphasis here is on getting to three no trumps if we can. Um, we don't really want to play this in five diamonds or. Uh, a part score in diamonds. Um, if we can make it in three no trumps. Um, so three clubs might be six card diamonds with a club stop. If you rebid three diamonds, it's definitely six card diamonds without a club stop. So um, responder might even pass that with quite a strong hand if they've um, if they don't think we've got the stuff to get to uh, five diamonds and can't hold the clubs. Um, but it's all basically natural apart from that. So if it goes two diamonds, sorry, one no trump, sorry, one sp one diamond, one spade, two diamonds, two no trumps, forcing inquiry. Three hearts and three spades are definitely upper range. Three card suits with a shortage in the other major. And two no trumps, three no trumps is upper range with two two in the majors. Because if you've got a four card major, you're not rebidding two diamonds. That's the point. So, if you haven't got six card diamonds, almost by definition, you're going to be five four in the minors. And so it's all about showing a three card major or denying having three, three one and being 2-2 two, two in the majors. That's what the responses to 2-0 no trumps are basically all about. Everybody clear up to this point? Ho, ho. And quite often, uh, again here, you know, we're going to end up quite happily in a motion fit. If you show a three-card major and they've got a four-card fit and they haven't got a strong holding in the other major, um, they know you've got a singleton there, so playing in the motion fit is much more preferable to chancing three-no trumps. But if they've got a decent holding there, then they can opt to play in three no trumps, knowing that you're five four in the minors, or or maybe six three. Um, anybody got any questions about the two diamond rebids? I'll try and give you some examples in a bit. We'll just run through a few before we start playing some. But uh, 
The thing to remember is that if you're upper range, you go by these forcing inquiries. If you're lower range, you tend to signify that by not using the forcing inquiry. And, uh, and then the sequence essentially becomes non-forcing. Okay, so bidding two hearts over one spade is always with five card diamonds. And it's always a four card major. And the same applies to, to two spades. The difference is, is that if you four, four, five naught exactly with a void club, you bid two spades first. We'll, we'll come to that in a minute. And that is radically, as it says there, radically different to the one diamond, one heart sequences, where you bid uh, two hearts with four, four, five, naught. Well, we covered that last week. Okay, so. If you're playing the reverse Roman two heart and two spade openers in the compact system, then you can't be four six in a major and diamonds if you open it one diamond. So if you're going to play Lucas twos, then then obviously you can be four six in the red suit. Um, that's you know just a matter of your preference and uh, what you decide to play. I say five card clubs for the three club rebid by responder. In practice, most often it's probably six card clubs. If uh, openers shown at least nine cards between diamonds and the major that they've shown, uh, i.e. hearts, um, you're not really going to try and suggest clubs with a five-card suit. It's more likely to be a six-card suit. But again, all of these bids over two hearts are showing lower range hands. The assumption being that if you have an upper range hand, you're going to make the two no trump forcing inquiry and find out more exactly what opener has. So we know at this point that the opener is f probably 4-5 in the red suits. So it's only a matter of showing um, where their shortage is or whether they're 2-4-5-2. Two, two. So we don't go above three hearts at this stage in case opener is 
lower range and minimum. We don't go beyond three hearts if uh, opener is lower range. So three clubs over two no trumps shows a spade shortage. Three diamonds is two four five two, and three hearts shows the club shortage. So again here, if possible, um, if you want to play in three no trumps opposite a spade singleton, then you're possibly better off um, not using the two no trump inquiry. You might just bid three no trumps straight off. Um, But you might find yourself in four, as high, you know, above the level of three no trumps, if partner's got that spade singleton, and you want to be in three no trumps if he's there. Any questions on the one diamond, one spade, two heart sequences? Just remember that anything other than two no trumps over two hearts is showing a lower range hand. Two no trump shows an upper range hand and is effectively game forcing. Not quite, but near enough. Obviously if if opener shows a lower range hand with a three club, three diamond or three heart bid, then it's open to uh, responder to sign off below game level but if opener also shows an upper range hand you're definitely going to end up in a game of some sort any questions well effectively that's natural um, you know classically you will have good stops in both black suits Roger because um, although I've said you know you could bid three no trumps if you if you had good spades but not necessarily as good clubs um, in practice you're not really going to want to take a chance on that so classically you will have both black suits um, and a hand just thinks that three no trumps is the right place to play. I haven't I haven't put it in because it's obviously it's fairly obvious once opener's shown four five in the red suits. Um, uh, if your maximum if you've got a thirty if you've got a thirteen count, um, you know, you might be one point short, but if that looks like it's the place to play. Um, it's just natural. Anything that I haven't mentioned here is by definition natural. As I said, the thing about the two no trump inquiry is that if partner's got a, a spade singleton and they're upper range, they're going to bid four clubs. And so you're past the level of three no trumps. Um, and if you don't want to risk that, then you might take a risk on the clubs and just bid three no trumps rather than two no trumps. But don't forget, you could you could bid two no trumps, part of it's four clubs, and you'll probably find that four no trumps is still possible. Um, and four no trumps would still be natural and to play at that stage. <laughs> so
So same considerations here. If you're playing the reverse Roman two hearts and two spades opening, then there's no chance of opener having a four card major and six card diamonds. But if you're going to play Lucas twos or Tartan twos or some other kind of two level openers, um, then they can. Um, and you have to make the adjustments um, to to what follows. If you're not sure how to do it, then you're best off speaking to Brian Meadows, who's been playing Lucas twos instead of the reverse Roman for some years. Um, so he's fairly well versed in all the adjustments that you have to make to the complex one diamond. So again, although it says five plus clubs in practice, yeah, there's several people, there's several people who do play Lucas twos, and I've no problem with that. All I'm saying is that you have to make the adjustments to your complex one diamond sequences to take account of the fact that Opener might have six card diamonds and. Uh, a four card major. The main adjustment that you have to make is that um, it's a sort of semantic one really to do with the uh, the responses to the two no trump forcing inquiry because you may effectively have a shortage in both the other suits. And you might not have a stop in either. Um, but I mean, you know, if you're not going to play the reverse Roman, then you have to cope with that. I can't help you. <laughs> so again, if you don't use the forcing no trump, the forcing inquiry of two no trumps, by definition, you're showing a lower range, i.e. 11 or a poor 12 almost certainly an 11 count um, and so effectively you're just signing off here unless opener is maximum in which case obviously they can push on so we got a little bit more space here um, over the forcing inquiry, you've got a chance to distinguish between a club singleton and a club void, which we didn't have with the two heart sequences. And again, <coughs> if you've got, if you don't have a fit for one of Opener's suits here, it's entirely possible, especially if you're upper range, that you're not actually going to use that two no trump bid. You might just bid three no trumps over two spades or two hearts. Um, you know, as you can see there, an upper range hand that's not balanced is going to go beyond three no trumps so if you want to play in three no trumps then pretty much you know pretty much whatever opener has then you're best off just bidding three no trumps over two hearts or two spades so if you use the forcing inquiry it tends to be when you've got a fit for either the major or for diamonds
that is especially true over to two spade bid. So any questions about one diamond, one spade, two spades? Before we move on. Okay, so the difference here is that if you rebid two no trumps over one spade, you're showing any 4441 hand that's upper range. So a good 13 to 15. And over two no trumps, three clubs ask, and now we bid the suit below the singleton. And this is the same as almost everywhere else in the system. So you'd rebid re three no trumps with a diamond singleton. So if you if you show an upper range hand and it's possible for a responder to make an eater ask below game level, then that's fine. And you're now in an established asking bid sequence, so relay beta and epsilons are available. Um, and they know where your singleton suit is, so they know your shape exactly. If you can't make an eater ask below game level, then your options are limited to making a beta ask in the singleton suit and then signing off at whatever level you want to play in the suit you want to play in or in no trumps for that matter but you won't normally be looking at a slam here with a maximum of 13 opposite a maximum of 15 so it's unlikely it's not impossible you know you may be playing with a 30 card deck for example So if, if opener is lower range, then we're definitely not looking at a slam. Uh, so there's no eater asks. Um, it doesn't stop responder from bidding game. Um, but beater in the singleton suit is the only avenue that uh, responder has. Yeah, I mean... Responder might be extremely shapely. Uh, so I, I won't say that you could never get to a slam, but if res if opener is lower range and responder is 11 to 13, it's not very likely that you're going to go looking for a slam. So if open has shown that the lower range basically responder decides where to play, that's the bottom line. Any questions on the 4441 hands, whether it's a 2 no trunk rebid or a 3 level rebid?
Um, probably two no trumps, um, Charlene, because that's going to tell them whether there's a fit for their long suit or not. Um, you know, sometimes you just have to wing it. You know, um, but but the two no you know the two no Trump inquiry um, will at least tell you whether you're um, looking at a fit at all for your very long suit or not. Obviously, the likelihood is that you're not, um, but it's not impossible. Um, You know, some some hands like this are going to be difficult, but at least you can find out. Well, the the danger is is that if if partner has a shortage in your very long suit, and they get a chance to show that now a bid in their known short suit if they've shown a singleton or void is by definition going to be beta so you would have to jump in your very long suit to make it natural and non-forcing which pretty much is going to mean the five level at least um, you know that's the problem so you might you might just funk out in three no trumps if you clearly haven't got a fit and just hope for the best but I mean you know as I've said before no system is absolutely guaranteed perfect um, you know you will find the very occasional hand where you've got a problem here um, but 90% of the time you're going to be okay and that's what that's what systems are about. <clears throat> okay. Let's practice some hands. Can I have four victims, please? Thank you, Clement. Any more for any more. Come on, there's only about eight of you, so it shouldn't be too difficult. And an east west, please. You're going to pay? Well, yeah, BBO dollars, acceptable. I even take plastic. <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to get the example hands here, Roger. <laughs> Playing the example hands is much more fun than me just going through them. Come on, let's have an East, please. Mehmet, Sanya, Charlene, Maisie, somebody. Don't make me play these because it's no, it's no fun for me. Come on, guys, it's no fun for me to sit and play. I've set the hands and I can see all the cards. Come on, Mehmet. Oh, uh, well.
By the way, there is one thing. Um, I haven't made much uh, mention of interference. Um, if you get interference immediately over the complex one diamond opening, the website does give you uh, fairly near the top of the page for the complex one diamond instructions on how responder shows their range or their strength. Um, absolutely, you need to be alerting absolutely everything here. So please have a look at the website um, to deal with interference. We're only going to interfere here if it's absolutely obvious to do so. Just so you can get these mainstream sequences under your belt. So south is 11 to 13 and north by definition is 13 to 15 because we're not vulnerable here. So all the arrangements for super accepts and so on are just the same as over an opening one no trump here because in terms of suits the one diamond and one spade bid don't mean anything. So Roger can't assume that this is actually a heart suit. Um, two spades, Roger, with your hand, showing a, a maximum hand with good four card heart support and a weak double tinning clubs. So if you, if you had a, a doubleton but it wasn't a weak doubleton, you would bid two no trumps rather than two spades um, with a maximum and four card hearts. And if you had three, four, three, three, you would bid three hearts rather than showing your doubleton or bidding two no trumps. Um, okay. Uh, this is dangerous, this Clement. I, I hate to tell you. Yeah, two spades is a super accept of hearts. Three diamonds is suggesting that actually you don't have a heart fit. And possibly can't stop clubs.
Weird sequences. Okay. Clements, I think you would have been better off bidding four hearts over two spades. Um, three diamonds over two spades is a dangerous route to take. Because it implies that you don't have a club stop, don't have even four card hearts. So partner might hair off into five diamonds, which might not be making. The other option you have over two spades is three three clubs would be beta. Because effectively North's declared shortage is in clubs. I know it's a doubleton, but three clubs here would be beta. So if you want to start investigating the possibility of a slam, um, then that would be the way to go. But when openers balanced, um, and you've only got a maximum of 28 between the two hands, it's unlikely that you're going to be looking at a slam. It's not impossible, but it's unlikely. Anybody else got any questions or comments here before we move on? Okay. So one diamond, one spade, one no trump, two diamonds, two spades, four hearts is probably the best sequence. Yes, on a good day you might make 12 tricks, but I don't think you want to be in slam. Yeah. Just over half an hour. Okay. <coughs> Earth calling Roger. Oh, sorry, I've got the wrong bloody cards loaded here. Stupid boy.
Better, Barry. Roger, Earth calling Roger. So now if you want it, four hearts is beta. Um, otherwise you pretty much have to tell me where you want to play. Because I still don't know, Barry. So if I've got a, a heart shortage, Barry can tell that I don't have any controls there, not ones that I'm including anyway. So it's a fair bet where those controls are. Okay, well done, Barry. So, you initially tried four spades rather than two no trumps. That's the sort of bid that you might make if you had a bare 11 rather than um, the bursting maximum 13 count that you've got. So, six spades are going to make very comfortably. On a good day like today, you're actually going to make seven. Um, if you get everything right. So again, Barry here has the sort of 
the sort of hand where there's absolutely no wasted values in heart and because of his extra shape dovetailing very nicely with my shape um, it's worth pushing if he wasn't quite as good he could possibly just sign off with four spades over four clubs but with his hand four spades over two spades would be wrong um, as you can see you would just miss the hand because I've, I'm, I'm never going to bid slam or even push for slam over four spades anybody else got any comments or questions before we move on If anybody else wants to sit, by the way, please just say, because like I said, I would love to stand. It's no fun for me playing these because I can see everything that's happening. So three spades showing a club singleton. Okay, well done. If partner's uh, sharp, you're going to make 10 tricks. But you've no fears here. Um, there's absolutely no way that the defence 
can get four tricks even before you run your nine tricks in the red suit and one trick in whichever suit they attack. So well done. Three no trumps a pragmatic decision here. Anybody got any questions? So it wouldn't necessarily have been wrong for Roger to just bid three no trumps over two hearts. He's got good strong holdings in both black suits. Um, Okay, moving on. Okay, Barry, I mean, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with three no trumps by you instead of two no trumps. Uh, it's just a matter of how you value your hand. Um, you know, do you count yours as a good 13 or a bad 13? Um, I would say it's probably more like a bad 13 than a good 13 myself. Uh, so I think probably two no trumps is better. But... Uh, You're definitely going to want to end up in three no trumps if I'm up a range having bid the two diamond inquiry and you're sat there with a 13 count. Um, you can be fairly sure that three no trumps is where we're going to end up playing. And if not, it's going to be five of a minor.
You should be able to see the hands now, uh, Clement. I think it's been accepted, the claim, hasn't it? Bad Clements decided to interfere. If you haven't already, uh, Barry, you're best off just having a quick squint at the the website if you're not sure um, what action to do over interference. So basically, a double here by you is any 11 to 13. Or it might be 8 to 10 with hearts. No, Barry, double. Any 11 to 13 doubles. Is Barry on voice? No, it's fine. I did say only interfere is absolutely obvious to do it. So here, everybody, double is either 8 to 10 with hearts, i.e. it's penalty, or it's any 11 to 13. No, but I've got I've got the option of passing this for penalties if I want. If I think you're eight to ten with hearts. The trouble is, Barry, is that if you pass it's showing me um you know, any naught to seven. And, and I might well just pass. You don't want that to happen when you've got 11 to 13 points. We've almost certainly got a game on. Well, you're right to be nervous. I, I mean, I don't know for sure that one heart is going off. It probably is, but... I think one heart's probably going for only 500.
Eek. This isn't a suit here, Barry, don't forget. Three spades. If I had four card spades, I'd have bid two spades over the double. Or even one spade. So this is going to play very nicely in 3 no trumps. Well done, Barry. Get everything right. You're probably going to make 12 tricks here on that lead. Just out of interest, Roger, why no heart lead here when partners overcalled a heart? Ten of spades looks a little bit speculative to me. In a perfect world, one heart's going to go for one, two. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to. One, two, three, four, diamond rough, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, heart rough, seven, king of hearts, eight. One heart's going for 500. <laughs> okay, one more hand, guys, and then we'll call it a night. Um, ah, right, okay, Roger.
And we're off to the races. Maybe. Barry's going for it. <sighs> no. Four hearts is beta here, Barry. Um... Because I've shown a, a heart shortage with three spades. So four clubs is suggesting that we're playing clubs. Because don't forget, at this point, I have no idea what suit you want to play in. Which is why pretty much you have to, ex to set the contract now. Bearing in mind, I've got a heart shortage. You can actually pretty much work out where my controls are. And you know that I'm upper range. Okay, I have to say, I think this is a dodgy slam. You've got to find the queen, the queen of diamonds. Ha! <laughs> nice try, Roger. <laughs> I have every confidence my partner would finesse against South. <laughs> Sorry, Clement. Not sure what you're getting at. Low level beta? No, there isn't. There isn't one. There's beta in my known short suit, which is four hearts. But I think I think I would have signed off in five spades over five diamonds. Five controls isn't really enough. You almost need me to have seven controls. And now you know I've got the three missing aces and the king of spades, pretty much. But uh, really, there's too much missing here. And at the end of the day, West only has a 12 count. I know it's a very nice 12 count. And it's worth the 2 no trump inquiry. Um, but you need me to have a very specific 
set of cards, really. You know, you need me to have the ace, queen of diamonds, and the ace of clubs, and the king of spades. And you've no means, really, of checking that that's the case. So you've got two choices. You can either... Um, try club finesse either way in order to get rid of a diamond or you can take the diamond finesse but either way you've got a fair amount of work to do well it's pushy put it that way you can make slams on a lot less than 27 but uh, um, you, okay Anyway, well done, everybody. It's uh, two minutes of midnight, so I think we'll call it a night there. Anybody got any questions or comments before we uh, push off? And we'll have a look at uh, one diamond, one no trump sequences next week, and then move on to the multi.